So everything you're like, oh man, this thing going well, this thing going well. Man. And then what happened? Um there was one game. Uh I can't I think I, I can't remember if we were playing the Giants or uh, or it may have been the Browns, but we had one particular play. You know, your game plan, yeah. you scripted throughout the course of the week. I ran some route, like a bench route, go in, get the uh, the, the safety to bite or the corner to bite, and I'm over the top. Dude, it's wide open every day in practice. I mean, even in we, when we didn't have to script it, right. it was wide open. Mm-hmm. So we get in the game. This is my play. I run the route to a T, just like we've been running all week in practice, scripted, DB, walk through. DB bite. You like this money. Shannon. Left him. I'm wide open. I'm looking better. I'm looking, I'm looking for the ball. I'm like, I know this is a touchdown. He goes elsewhere with the football. So I get back in the huddle. I go back, I get back, go back to the huddle. And I said, I said, yo, I said, I was open. I said, I said, what happened? He told me to shut the fuck up. Hold on. Bro, on you my pra- you on practice my- this play all week. Yes, sir. There's nothing like you practicing a play and it happens just like you drew it up. Mm-hmm. And you there, like, oh, I'm about to get this money. And all you say, hey, bro, all, all I, I was said, open. I was open. I said, what happened? And he told me to shut the F up. Seriously. And so I didn't say anything because coming from San Francisco, I didn't want to make no. Yep. I didn't, you know what I mean? I already know what time it was. So I didn't want to create no, no animosity, no tension mm-hmm. right there on the field. So when we came off that series, I went straight to my coach. And I'm like, yo, I said, because I didn't, I didn't want to blame anybody. Right. I wanted to see what happened. Right. Let me see what, what happened right. before I make any excuses. Right. So I asked Cole, I'm like, I said, what happened? Did he get flushed out of the pocket? So I'm thinking that's right, probably what. Right, he got flushed. Okay. He looked at me. He goes, I don't know. He goes, Terrell, I don't know why he didn't throw it. He just didn't throw it. Okay. So I left, I left it at that. Then did, say you it, go, did you go to him or like C-Mac? Not, I, I waited to after the game. Okay. And so again, me knowing everything that had transpired, how you know I'm gonna be looked at as villain. I'm on a new team. I wasn't trying to ruffle the feathers. I'm trying to be the consummate teammate. Mm-hmm. So I let the I let the everybody kind of just filter out of the locker room. And there was like a few guys left, whatever. And I just went to him and I just said, "Look, bro," I said, "I don't appreciate you, you know, cussing at me." I said, "Bro, I'm a grown man." Right. And I said, "From here on, man, don't don't talk to me that way. Oh, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a problem." Okay. And so I felt like me addressing that at, right. in that way mm-hmm. was a mature Terrell. Yeah. Because I could have went off on the football f- and out there in the middle of the field right. or when we got to the sideline, right. but I wasn't trying to do that. You're trying to be on your best behavior. Man, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. Okay. So when he did, I just told him, I said, look, bro, don't, don't, don't address me that way. Right. I said, we're grown men. I got kids. Like, that's, that's not going to happen. Okay. And so from there, I think that's where the wheels. So what did he? What when you said that, bro? Don't address me like that. Hey, I don't know I what. You. I don't know. I honestly, I was so mad. I don't know what he said or if he said anything that really could have made a difference at that point. I just didn't like the the, the tone number one, and for real, the way he came at me. My team, they was in the huddle. Mm-hmm. It was it was foul. Right. It was foul, and so. Things just kind of just fell off, uh, fell off, fell off the tracks, uh, you know, from that point on. After I'm sitting here listening to you talk, that was the one. That was the one thing that I had. I don't mind being coached, but you can't curse me. Man, and see, I won't me. let you say anything to me that yeah. my grandmother couldn't say, and she gave me everything but life. She yeah. raised me. Yeah. So if she wouldn't say that to me, I'm not. You can't let, coach not, me. Coach yeah. me hard. Say, son, yeah. what do you see? What do you see? Yeah. We walk, we practice that play. If I made a mistake, John, say, hey, T, I, I need you to do better. Yeah. yeah but don't me. curse me. No, it, and it wasn't just no curse, bro. It was it was demonstrative. Right. You know what I mean? It was just I didn't. It, trust me. It, it it struck a chord with me, and like I said, I never forget it. And so, like I said, I just I just felt like I needed to do that because if I just let that slide, I just felt like he was gonna just continue to think that it was okay. Right. And so my grandmother always said, "Don't never let nobody run over you." No. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> how that's how they that's how they say it. Don't let nobody run over you because right. they you do that. They're going to continue. continue. And so for me, I just addressed it and left it at that. And so maybe he didn't like what I had to say. Um, and, but I, like I said, I didn't allow that to really deter anything that we did on the football field. Right. When we went out on the football field, bro, I just played. 
you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, like I said, I had, a, I, I was pissed, but then you know, I just, like I said, I just did what I was supposed to do. So that game, that was early in the season. Mm -hmm. Do you be, believe that was the beginning of the end of your relationship? What do you think? Probably you think because, that was? right, because, you know, as I, because I, 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 I still start, I was balling. Oh, you were balling? I, I look back, people tell me now I played in 21 games in Philly, I scored 20 touchdowns. Yeah. 21 touchdowns. I mean, 20 touchdowns. In 21 games, yeah. Yeah, and so... Um, I look back on it and the way that I was balling and the way the city embraced me. And you remember, like, when he got drafted, it was either him or Ricky Williams. Right. They, they booed, booed him. Correct. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think he had some resentment because when I started balling from week one, when I scored three touchdowns against. They were going crazy. When they found out that they had the Eagles had signed you, the fans were going crazy. They The, the entire stadium, T.O., 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 it was it was like something I had never experienced. Right. Everything probably that I wish I could have done in high school or college, I was experiencing as a pro. Right. I was the, I was a star. I witnessed that on the sidelines in high school right. with other guys. Right. They were the star of the, right. of the school, star of the team. In college, it was the same way. I worked my butt off, Shannon, to right. become T.O. Right. And so. I can't imagine what he felt, or I guess maybe he had something against the city, but to have 70 plus thousand, 67 plus thousand chanting, you know, when you do something big, have a big play, right. and you're not, I guess he didn't feel like he was, you know, being recognized uh -huh. as such, and me coming there my first year and really making a difference, and then we get, you know, okay, I got hurt late in the season, right. December, and then... Uh-oh, the, something was said. The, 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 the thing was with the media was, was I going to be ready to play in the Super Bowl? Right. Him being the quarterback, the mouthpiece, the, the leader, the captain of the team, he had to face those questions the rest, pretty much leading into the playoffs, playoffs or mm -hmm. what have you. And he basically said, we don't need T.O. to win. We've won games but with, with, without him. And so I didn't really take any slight to it, but I heard it. Right. And so I guess he you got – You said it was an unnecessary slight. He could have said, look, we want T.O. to get back as soon as he possibly can. As we, a quarterback and a leader of the team. Right, you, just say, you say the right thing. You, you be politically correct. Right. Regardless of how you feel, you be PC in that moment. Right, you can address it. You, you, you yeah, know how to course. address it. And so, again, um, that was something that, that kind of loomed. And, and then there was a con the contract situation after that. You know, he spoke highly of uh, uh, Brian Westbrook's uh, uh, contract, mm -hmm. basically endorsing that the team should, should, should sign him to an extension. But when it came to me, Nothing. Radio silent. Nothing. So that's when I knew that it was it was something personal. Uh, it wasn't anything personal with me against him, because uh -huh. I'm not that person. Right. I'm not. I've never been that type of person. But Regardless, you are the type of person. If somebody cross you, you done. Oh yeah, yeah, for it, sure. It, it, oh, it's for over sure. Deal. For sure. Yeah, yeah. But if yeah, but I'm not the type. Of, I'm not no no jealous type of person. Right. I'm not a hater. I'm not no gossiper. I'm right. not going to talk bad about a, uh, another person because you know, I may think he's better than me or whatever. Right. I've never been that type of person. I've been my own person right. because I knew my path and my journey to be to be uh, who I became. Have you talked to Donovan since you left Philly? Man, we've talked and uh, addressed that a couple of times, and then I think over was it over the summer mm -hmm. during the couple, during, last year. It resurfaced. Mm -hmm. He uh, Tez does this show called yeah. Untold Stories. Right. He brings Donovan on, and this is how it came back. This right. is how it comes back up. Um, he addresses what happened or what have you, and then he says that I, you know, that I prevented them from uh, going back to back to Super Bowls, this and that and the other. But which was a bunch of hogwash because it, it is it's hypocrisy at its at its finest. Because during the time that they were asking him questions about, you know, would I be ready or did we need him? He said he didn't need you. He didn't need me. But now, years later, you want to recount what happened, and now, now I prevented you from going, prevented the team from going to the Super Bowl. So which is it going to be? Right. So I just had to basically just follow up, you know, um, on you know, do a follow up or just kind of just. But y'all cool? No, we ain't cool. Not after that, because I thought we were. We had addressed it at some point. I had to run into him, and I thought we were cool. Oh, okay, with it. okay, okay. And then this show comes about. Right. Untold stories, right. and he's and it's. You know, hold on, bro. I thought we had thought we right, had put exactly this, put put this to bed. So I just had to address, you know, 
what he had put out there. And so mm -hmm. I just basically just gave my side of the story. So, man, you know, during that time that I played and, you know, media had asked him during my tenure there, you know, did I help him become a better, you know, better quarterback, this and that and the other. He got a, I think he took offense to that. And why? why? I, I didn't, you had to ask him that. I don't know why. But I even had, I had a conversation with my, my receiver coach at that time about some of the same things that the media was asking about his stats and how they increase. And you look at before I was got there, when I got there and after I got there, right. it was obvious. Right. And my, my coach knew that, but for whatever reason, he didn't like the questioning or, or the idea that I came in and I made him a better but quarterback. But it's okay, it's fact. Bro, look I, at my numbers with John Elway, look at my numbers without. And, but I didn't have it's a problem. Okay. I didn't have a problem. He had the problem with that. I didn't. Yeah. So this is where all of this, you know, like you said, where things went wrong, that it was him. It wasn't me, but everybody would think it's me because of history. Right. And the narrative that everywhere that I right. go, I'm an issue. Yeah, it's hard to outrun your reputation. Right. So, like I said, I just had to be true to who I was, man. At the end of the day, I know that with every quarterback that I played, the good ones, the average ones, not so... I wouldn't have been able to do what I did without them. Right. It was a complimentary thing. You know what I mean? So it was, I, I was, bro, I was like a kid in a can store. Just like Andy knew what he was getting. I knew what I was getting myself into when I went to uh, it's a high powered offense that needed somewhat somebody of my, of my caliber. Right. The defense was, was stocked, stacked. Uh, you got Trotter, Simon, you got, Dawkins, Lewis, I mean, the defense was there. Mm -hmm. the, our defense was like offense. So I already knew I was going to score. I was going to be scoring touchdowns left right. and right because we were going to have a short field. We are going to get the ball a lot. And so the numbers that we put up, like, it, he, he improved in pretty much every category. Right. And for whatever reason, he doesn't – not that he needs to or I need any validation, but the media – But the numbers speak for themselves. I get that. So, like I said, it wasn't – a me situation. It wasn't me that was causing the issue. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.